troubleshooting. For engine-related problems, please refer to the engine manufacturer's troubleshooting guide, which was provided with your unit. For other problems, please refer to the Thompson Pump Job and Product Troubleshooting Guides, which also were provided. When a problem is encountered with your pump or its effectiveness in accomplishing the task, we recommend using a vacuum test plate as a first step to identifying and solving the problem. The vacuum test plate will determine whether the problem is with the pump or piping system. To perform the vacuum plate test, disconnect the suction line, ensure that the volute drain valve and vacuum plate ball valve are closed, and then start the diesel engine. Raise the RPM to approximately 1800 and place the vacuum plate on the suction connection. Wait until the needle on the vacuum gauge rises to its highest reading and hold. Reduce the RPM to idle and shut down the engine. Observe the vacuum gauge needle for movement. A successful vacuum test will read between 23 and 25 inches of mercury at sea level, which would be equivalent to a 25 to 28 foot suction lift. To break the vacuum, simply open the vacuum plate ball valve. If the vacuum plate test is successful, the problem most likely is not with the pump. Then, further examination of the piping system is recommended. If the vacuum plate test is not successful, then further examination of the pump unit is recommended. While you'll seldom experience problems, we will review the three which are most commonly encountered when operating a dry priming pump. 1. The unit will not prime or takes a long time to prime. 2. The unit is not pumping. 3. The unit has high vacuum but low or no flow. First common issue. The unit will not prime or takes a long time to prime. If your pump will not prime or is slow to prime and has a low vacuum reading, begin troubleshooting for the following. Ensure that the discharge priming valve is opening, closing, and sealing properly. Verify that all the drain valves are closed. Check suction hoses for leaks or obstructions. Locate the half-inch check valve on top of the separation chamber. The top is removable for service. Verify that the check valve is free of debris and has no obstructions. Also, be certain the vacuum shutoff valve on the separation chamber is open. Visually inspect the clear hose for discoloration kinks or obstruction. This can reduce the pump's air handling capabilities. Next, check the stainless steel braided hose from the air compressor. If there is damage or leaks, it will prevent the venturi nozzle from creating the proper vacuum. Listen for the pop-off valve. If it is releasing air, the venturi nozzle could be clogged or the pressure relief valve may require further inspection. Locate the pump's venturi nozzle. Remove and clean. Disconnect the nipple connected to the clear hose and make sure the nipple is clean. Note: It is not normal for fluid to be passed through the venturi nozzle. Next, visually inspect the float adjustment and jam nut inside the air separation chamber for tightness. The rubber bumper should be firm and completely close off the vacuum port on the top plate when the float is in the up position. Inspect the pivot pins, cotter pins, and all linkages for damage or binding. Check that the float is attached and not full of water. Check condition of the bumper stud and seat. Second common issue. The unit is not pumping. If your pump is not pumping, begin troubleshooting for the following. Visually inspect the pump's suction lines. They must be free of leaks or damage. Examine your suction line positioning. Make sure it is deep enough and not vortexing. Be sure the submerged hose does not come in contact with or rest on the bottom surface. Check for airlock in the discharge side of the system. Symptoms include an extremely low vacuum on the suction side and high pressure or low flow on the discharge side and steam in the pump end. 
ensure that the discharge is not plugged or capped off. Examine the mechanical seal and reservoir for presence of oil and check the condition. Third common issue, the unit has high vacuum, low flow. High vacuum, low flow, or no flow situations are usually caused by a restriction of some kind on the suction side of the system. Begin troubleshooting as follows. Ensure that the suction strainer is not clogged or mired in the mud. Inspect the suction hose for kinks or a collapsed inner liner. The suction lift may be too high. Lower the pump closer to the source. The discharge priming valve may not be opening fully. The discharge head may be too high. The pump may be running too slow. The impeller may have become blocked or restricted. Again, please be sure to thoroughly read your operations and maintenance manual included with your pump for full details.